those hands and just worship him from the depth of your heart. Your goodness looks good on us. Your goodness looks good on us. Your goodness looks good on us. Everywhere you glory. Lord, show us your face. Spirit of God, we welcome you in our midst this morning. And we thank you for how you started with us in this year. We thank you for what you have laid before us. Holy Spirit, we receive grace from you. We receive strength from you. We receive unction from you, Lord. We receive the touch of your presence, confirming every word you have spoken to our hearts. Lift your hands and just say, thank you, Jesus, for your glory. Thank you, Jesus, for your favor. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness in our lives. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Can somebody celebrate Jesus? Celebrate Jesus. Shall we be seated? God bless you. Can you say God bless you, choir? Praise the Lord. We have started in the new year of the Lord's favor. Somebody shout the year of the Lord's favor. Can you say it one more time? The year of the Lord's favor. And this morning I'm going to be speaking on the subjects. And I'm going to start on this series on enjoying the Lord's favor. Enjoying the Lord's favor. And I want to urge you not to miss any of these Sundays. Uh, because it's going to go through a series to prepare us to enjoy the Lord's favor. To do all you can and all you can and do it to ensure that you do not miss any of the service. Get the disc or the tape or the recording for your friends because this year is our year of the Lord's favor. Psalm 102, we read from verse 12 and Proverbs chapter 3, we read from verse 1. Psalm 102, I will read from verse 12 and 13 and then Proverbs from verse Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 1 to 4. Well, let's start with the book of Psalms 102. But thou, O Lord, shall endure forever and thy remembrance unto all generations. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter number 3, I will read from verse 1. My son, how many sons of God are here? Can you wave your hands to me? My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck Write them upon the tables of thy heart, so shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God 
and man. I speak on enjoying the Lord's favor. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. And we thank you for your good word you have spoken to our hearts. As we gather in your presence to learn of you. As we gather here to receive a touch of your spirit. We ask, Holy Spirit, that according to that which you have spoken, no man shall leave this year without the manifestation in full of your favor in all areas of our lives. And Father, as we step into the commencement periods of this year, teach us your ways, teach us your word. Lead us to the place where you have commanded your favor. Lead us to the place where you have desired that we will get to. Lord, all that we need to do, every step we require to take on a daily basis consistently, endow us with your grace to perform it. Spirit of a living God, take control of this atmosphere and the hearts of men. And Lord, bring to our remembrance the things you have said. And let there be a performance of your word. We give you praise forevermore. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. It is a great blessing that the Lord has commanded upon us as a people this year. As he has given us that prophetic word, the year of the Lord's favor. What the Lord has pronounced upon us as his children shows that in our lives, something wonderful is going to happen this year. Look at him and say something wonderful is going to happen to you this year. It means that even in the midst of trouble, even in the midst of global trauma or whatever it is that plagues other men, God has singled us out for his mercy, singled us out for an advantage, for an elevation in the course of our life's pursuit. In the book of Genesis chapter 6, you read the story of how God was provoked by the wickedness of men on the face of the earth. And because of that, he said in verse 7, I will destroy man whom he had created, destroy them from the face of the earth, both man and beast. And he said, for I regret that I made them. But when you go to the next verse, verse 8, he says, but Noah, somebody say, but Noah. He says, but Noah has found favor in the sight of the Lord. Another translation says, but Noah has found grace. Now when God made this pronouncement, he said, I will destroy man. He did not exclude any man. All men were susceptible to being destroyed. However, in the midst of all men falling under that judgment, he singled one out because he said what? He has found favor in my sight. So even when all men are suffering the same calamity, if you have found favor before God, it will not come near you. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so when you are speaking about enjoying the Lord's favor, recognize that favor has a distinguishing factor in the lives of men. If the Lord has commanded favor upon his people, Israel, it will not matter what the other part of the nation is going through. It will not matter that some people are suffering this or some people are experiencing that or whatever evil might be in the land. He says that I will distinguish and compensate you. That's what favor means. In Genesis chapter 39, even though Joseph was tossed into prison, prison is not a place of favor, is it? It's a place of trouble. It's a place of calamity. It's a place of regret. It's a place of pain. It's a place where you know that even if you come out, it's with the skin of your teeth. But the Bible tells us in verse 20 of Genesis 39 that Joseph's master took him, put him in the prison where the king's prisoners were bound. But in verse 21, he says, But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Ordinarily, he was not entitled to it. Can I have some volume on this, please? Ordinarily, he would not enjoy what he was, what, what he came to enjoy. One, he was not an Egyptian. Two, he was thrown into prison for a crime 
that was considered not just heinous enough to be in prison, but it was almost like a taboo because he was accused of going after his master's wife, even though it was a lie. And if you have ever been to prison on any evangelism before, I've been there in different capacities, evangelism, prison, decongestion, as attorney general. I've been there in different capacities, and I hear the same story. And what is that story? Why are you here? Why are you here? It's not me. Everybody says it's not me. So if Joseph too had gone to the prisoner, to the keeper of the prison and said, it's a lie, I didn't do it. Who would believe him? Yet, God said, Joseph found mercy and favor in the sight of the keeper of the prisons. May you find mercy and favor this year. In the sight of all men, in the name of Jesus. So in the midst of trouble, in the caustic environment of prison, Joseph yet enjoyed the Lord's favor. And that's for you to understand that favor is not limited by whatever circumstance any man is going through. The favor of the Lord is not limited by wherever the environment where you found yourself. The favor of the Lord is not limited by any other factor that has limited other men. The favor of the Lord is not limited because everybody around you is disfavored. The favor of the Lord is not contained by anything that this world has to offer. Because enjoying the Lord's favor is not dependent on the circumstances of this world. There are other principles that helps us to command the Lord's favor wherever we go. What do we mean by favor? Favor simply means a privilege granted you that others don't enjoy. When you say somebody is favored, it means he's enjoying a privilege that other people are not enjoying. Amen? It means he's enjoying a privilege that no one else who might think they are deserving is capable of enjoying. That's what it means to be favored. And that was what the angel Gabriel said to Mary, the mother of Jesus, in Luke 1, 28. Blessed art thou amongst women. You are highly favored among women. There are other women, but you are the one selected of God to bath the Messiah. Other people don't have that privilege. You are the only one that has it. What does it mean to say you are favored? It also means to enjoy the goodwill of another. Other people might go there requiring the same benefit, but they don't get it. But you get there and they confide on you. That's what it means to enjoy favor. You enjoy the goodwill of others or the goodwill of another. Many times in your life, you would have found yourself in situations where other people don't enjoy what you enjoy. That is just the favor of the Lord. That is just how God works when he's chosen to favor his own. Another meaning of the word favor is that it is a benevolent act of kindness. It is just conferred on you. It's not dependent on some qualification, but it's just conferred on you. Just, God just looks at us and he just decides to show favor. He just said, the time to favor Zion has come. The set time is here. That's the time he has chosen to confide his benevolent kindness on us. It is also a show of preference to you over and above others. It's also a show of preference to you over and above others. When God said to Samuel to go and anoint one of the sons of Jesse to be king, Jesse had several sons, but God preferred David to all the other sons that hitherto passed in front of Samuel. It was preference. Amen? He might not be the most muscular, he might not be the most educated, he might not be the tallest, he might not be the most intelligent, but he was the one God preferred. May the Lord prefer you above others in the name of Jesus. It also means to make an exception of us, calls you out, brings you out, and puts you on the pedestal to stand. That's what it means to enjoy God's favor. However, brethren, 
to enjoy the promise of the Lord's favor, what manner of man ought you to be? What manner of person should you be if you will enjoy God's favor? Many people wish, many people long, many people desire to enjoy the favor of the Lord without taking to the precepts that will ground and position them for the Lord's favor. Many people want to enjoy favor. Many things that you have enjoyed, they will tell you, ah, please, take me there, show me there, do this for me. People will walk up to me and say, ah, come and introduce me to Lagbaja so that I can also enjoy the favor you enjoyed from that Lagbaja. Sometimes it works, many times it doesn't. Because even me that enjoyed the favor, it was not because I just happened to know the person. God just extended favor. And I've come to realize that until you discover the secrets to enjoying the favor of the Lord, many times we keep running, we keep chasing, we keep lobbying, we keep chasing things that the Lord could by his favor confer on us. To have access into the Lord's favor, to above it operational in our lives, to distinguish you and separate you from others, you need to become the kind of person that commands that favor wherever you turn. Let me say to you, not all men enjoy the Lord's favor. Not all men enjoy the Lord's favor. Let me even say this to you. Not all Christians enjoy the Lord's favor. Let me even ram it in. Not all believers enjoy the Lord's favor. Not because they cannot, but simply because there are some indicators and indices in their lives that positions you for the favor of the Lord. But if you take yourself out of that equation, favor eludes us. There are folks who have been positioned on the pathway of enjoying the Lord's favor, but they unilaterally or unconsciously or knowingly took themselves out of that path and they entered into disfavor. Perhaps if they have remained on that path, that supernatural endowment of power from on high would have rested upon them. Favor is a supernatural endowment of power. Even the favored person recognizes that, but for God. Even the person in favor realizes it wasn't me. Even the favored person realizes I didn't do nothing. I told you when I was applying for SAN, even me, I knew that, but for the favor of God. If I thought I had met every qualification on paper, so did 120 others. If I thought you were this, you were that, so were at least 80, others. If you thought you know this, you know that, so did all the others. If you thought that nothing you claim you have as of right will qualify you for only what God can favor you for. Amen? And so it takes the favor of God. As I stood with colleagues discussing our next steps on the day of our interviews, and somebody was telling me, oh, this is my 14th interview, this is my 10th, I realized it's up for the favor of God. You need to recognize that in your life, it will take only favor to position us. And so if you recognize that, then what manner of person ought us to be? Because it is an uncommon force in our lives. It's an uncommon endowment of grace from on high. It is something that can attract blessing, attract promotion, attract provision, attract distinction, attract elevation, attract increase, attract everything good to us if you command the favor of God. In Daniel chapter 6, the favor of the Lord was upon Daniel to such an extent that even when they lied against him, even when he was sentenced to the lion's den, the favor of the Lord remained with him in the den of lions. The favor of the Lord rested on him in the den of lions. And it made it impossible for the lions to eat Daniel when he was there, because the Bible says the Lord had sent an angel to shut the mouth of the lion. And if you thought that because the lions didn't eat Daniel, so they won't eat somebody else, the next morning, his accusers, 
The king realized these people just set him up. So he threw his accusers and their family into the den of lions. And the Bible tells us in Daniel chapter 6 verse 24 that before they hit the ground, the lions already grabbed them and broke their bones. So if they thought that because Daniel was favored last night, that the lions didn't eat him, so these lions too must not eat me, they missed it. That he was favored does not mean the others two were favored. That's why I said it distinguishes you among the pack, among the circle, among the group. To activate the power of the Lord's favor, we will need to create that wholesome environment around ourselves. We will need to create that environment that enables favor to operate freely in our lives. You need to rid yourselves of certain things in our lives that may block the supernatural manifestation of the Lord's favor. The first thing I like to say about the manner of person you and I ought to be is that one, recognize it is the favor of the Lord. Recognize as a foundation that what you desire is the favor of the Lord. It is not the favor of a man. The principles you will apply to win the favor of a man are not the principles you will apply to win the favor of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you imagine that this favor of the Lord is just like this kind of other favors I've received, you will miss it. Because you will equate the favor of the Lord to the favor of man. Some people want to give you a job. They will tell you to come and pay $1,000 because they want to collect, you want to get a job from government. They tell you to come and pay two fifty thousand naira because you want a job from government. So when you pay the two fifty thousand naira, you win their favor for the job. Or you want a contract, they tell you to bring something up front, bring one million, bring two million, bring five million. And so once you are able to bring the five million, they say the contract is yours, which means it is by your five million that you have won their favor, right? If you apply that principle to winning the favor of the Lord, you have missed it. So the first thing to note is to recognize we are not talking about the favor of a man. We are talking about the favor of the Lord. And look through the word of God to see how men had activated the favor of the Lord. It was the Lord that shot them out of the lions. It was not King, King, King Darius. He had no, no power in it. It was the Lord that decided to single out Noah and his family. There was nothing about Noah and his family that was special. He could have gone the way of other men that were destroyed off the face of the earth. But the Lord, Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. It was the Lord's favor that rested upon Joseph that endeared him to Pharaoh. Otherwise, Pharaoh is not that much of a nice guy. Amen? Don't forget that Pharaoh had already promised that if you guys the advisors around him cannot interpret this dream. I'm going to kill you. Does that sound like a nice guy to you? So don't think that he was just a nice guy. That's why he decided to make Joseph the prime minister. No. But for the favor of the Lord, Joseph could not have made it out of prison. It is the Lord's favor and it is not the favor of any other being. And if it is the Lord's favor, he alone distributes to men as far as he desires, as widely as he wants. Many people want the Lord's favor, but they chase getting the Lord's favor using earthly means. Using earthly means. Some try to reach God for favor, but they are using earthly means. All sorts of doctrinal mistakes, all in a bid to win the Lord's favor. Rather than out of the love of God, serve him faithfully. Rather than out of the love of God, serve him willingly. Rather than out of the love of God, serve him obediently. God sees our hearts and he sees the motivation behind our service. And so if the motivation behind the service is because I just want him to see me. I just want pastor to see me. 
so that pastor will do this whenever he wants. So if, if you are thinking like that, I won't see you. God won't even put your remembrance in my mind. And it will not be, by, by, it will not be a mistake. It will just be deliberate on the part of God. Because that's not the principle of God. When God wanted to favor Mordecai, was Mordecai there? God just took away the sleep of the king, King Ahasuerus. The man just couldn't sleep on his bed anymore. And he was tossing and turning and he didn't know why he was tossing and turning on his bed. And he got up and decided to go into the archives of his library. And he was just opening books without knowing why he was opening books. And he did not know the book he was even looking for. All he knew was that there is something I need to do tonight. And I cannot sleep until I've done it. And then he found the book. And in the book, he realized there was somebody who had done a good turn for the king and did not ask for a favor in return. He had exposed the coup that was being planned against the king maybe years before. And nobody remembered him, nobody rewarded him, nobody compensated him. And he himself did not even talk about it. He was still carrying on his duties as if he did nothing. If it were some Nigerians I know. Omar Tebatin. You will remember that if not for me, anything else. If not for me, they don't yamu to you. And even after he has been rewarded, they will come back the following year and say, if not for me. And then they will come back the following year and say, if not for me. Why? Because they want you to know that I am the one that made it. But Mordecai did not. But when the time to favor him came, it was God that rose on his behalf. And the king looked through and saw that ah, there is a man here and called Haman and said, what will we do for the man in whom the king is pleased with? Thought it was himself. He had already ranted and ranted. And said, go and do that to Mordecai. Why? Even Mordecai didn't know anything. He was not involved in the process of his being favored. Recognize it is the Lord's favor. Say to your neighbor, recognize it is the Lord's favor. Secondly, to enjoy the favor of the Lord, your life must be pleasing to God. Your life must be what? You cannot desire the favor of the Lord and be living in sin or believe in a wayward lifestyle and expect the favor of the Lord. Proverbs 16, 7. When the ways of a man pleases the Lord, he maketh. Only when the ways of a man pleases the Lord, then what does he do? He maketh. You cannot demand that he should make of you when your ways are not pleasing to him. So if you demand or desire the favor of the Lord, recognize that your life must be pleasing to God. God said concerning Jesus, Matthew 3, 17, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. The blessings that we love to quote in Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 to 14 is conditional on our lives pleasing to God. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to obey his commandments and to do his will, then these blessings shall come after thee and overtake thee in the land of the living. And then he begins to roll out the blessings. But it's all conditional on our lives pleasing God. The favor of God is not a highfalutin mountain that is so awesome to climb. Let your life just be pleasing to God. Many times when you desire the favor of God, you yourself that desire, you don't know that you desire it. There are areas of your life as you are sitting down there that you might even imagine that I have already settled this, I know how to go about this. But God knows that except he favors you in that area, what you think you have settled, you have not even started. Amen? You have not even started. And so, I have come to understand that but for the favor of the Lord on a daily basis, the successes that we desire of the Lord will keep eluding us. Except you recognize that on a daily basis, my life must be pleasing to God. 
Are you living a life that is pleasing to God? Ask your neighbor, are you living a life that is pleasing to God? We all desire the favor of God. I desire the favor of God. I want to walk in the favor of God, but I know that to enjoy that favor, my life must please God. For the church to enjoy the favor of the Lord, our ways must please God. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 tells us how the church in that time enjoyed favor with God and all men. They were living a life of, that pleased God. They continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in their breaking of bread, in prayers, in fellowship, and in all good things. And fear came upon all the people, and they shared all they had in common with others. There was no rumor mongering in the congregation. There was no this and that, no backbiting, no rubbish, no nonsense like that. Why? And because of that, he said they had favor with all men, and the Lord added to them on a daily basis. Favorable ends come when your ways please God. You get to your shop in the morning. All you are interested in is pleasing God. Everybody thinks that they are going to make a kill, deceive the customer, but you choose not to. You choose to do what is right. And it's imagined, or it's imagined that you will not make as much as your contemporaries in the market. Because you choose to do what is right. You are not selling Taiwan like Europe. You are not telling us the price that is not the price. But you are selling it based on what you consider fair profit to you. And you think God will not favor you. When your time of favor comes, everybody in the market will envy you. They will not know that you live by a principle different from the ones that they live by. When the time of favor comes, it is not accidental. It is because that life pleases God. Does your life please God? If this year you must enjoy the favor of the Lord, then our lives must please God. Say to yourself, this year my life will please God. I am a favored child of God. The favored child of God is a child of God whose life will always please God at all times. His favor will cause even the most wicked of men to extend mercy towards you. Have you come in contact with people that everybody is complaining about? And everybody says, ah, it's a difficult man. He said this, he said that. He cannot do this. And you have engagement with the same person and you can't see the difficulty in the man. You can't see the toughness in the man. You can't say, I want you. How are you able to? Because the favor of the Lord is upon you. Other people might have problems, but not you. Everybody might have problems with Pharaoh, but when Joseph stood before Pharaoh, he was favored. People might be in trepidation to stand before their king, but when you stand before the same king, you are not in trepidation. They said to Esther, it is the law of the land. And except the king stretches out the golden scepter to you, or if the one that invites you to come, if you dare enter into the presence of the king, you are going to be beheaded. And Esther said, well, I will fast and pray, and then I will go in unto the king, even though he has not summoned me. If I perish, I perish. And she fasted and prayed. And sought the face of the Lord and opened the door of the court of the king and stood in the center of the court without being summoned by the king. And I can imagine all those who might have been there, they would have said, Ah, 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 Queen Esther, Queen Esther, ah, Ty. They would have been fearful for her that it is finished for this queen. Why did she do this? Why are you so foolish? Why did you not seek? Oh, yes. Why did you have to come? They would have been wondering what was going to happen. The person who was to guillotine her might have drawn the sword already. But because the favor of the Lord was upon her, the king held out the golden scepter to her. Hallelujah. That doesn't happen simply because you just, you just strolled in, you pancaked your face. Let me, let me, let me look pretty for him. That when he sees me like this, 
his head will turn. <laughs> you will see what will turn. And he held out the golden scepter to her. Why? When the ways of a man pleases the Lord, he maketh even his enemies. Your enemies are not supposed to favor you, but when your ways please God, even your enemies will favor you. They may not know they are favoring you, but their ways will end up favoring you. But your ways must please God. If you're asking yourself, how will I enjoy the Lord's favor this year? Start by pleasing God. Start by pleasing God. There were many evil kings in the Bible. But there were many men that still enjoyed favor before evil kings. There were many difficult men in the Bible. As difficult as Nabal was, Abigail still survived him. There are many people who are tough and cruel. Nobody could speak to Naaman because he was the king, captain of the king's army. Nobody could advise him, but there was a little servant girl in the house who could still advise the mighty man of valor and was not shushed off. When the ways of a man pleases the Lord, he maketh. Number three, what manner of man ought I to be to enjoy the Lord's favor? Be ready to obey God in all things. If you will enjoy the favor of the Lord, it will demand an obedient lifestyle in doing the impossible. There is a place where the Lord has commanded favor upon us. But will you obey God to find a place? When Elijah declared that there shall not be rain for the next three years on the face of the earth. It was the Lord that commanded the place where he will be fed, even though there will be no rain and everybody will suffer the drought, including the prophet that declared it himself. But the Lord said, go to the brook of Cherith. There I have commanded ravens to come and feed you there. Now, if Elijah felt, I'm not going there. This is where I'm going. I'm going to a bigger river, Jordan. That brook is too small. It's too narrow. It's too twisted. It's not the place. I want, I want to go to river, Jordan. That one is bigger. There, favor is not there. That disobedience would have cost him. But he obeyed and went there. And when God said, go to Zarephath, he obeyed and went there. If he had decided to go to somewhere else where he thought there was more provision, he would have walked out of the favor of God. Some people could have enjoyed significant increase in their lives, but they strolled away from the place where the Lord had commanded favor upon them. And when you stroll away from the place where the Lord has commanded favor upon you, don't think that the favor will be the one chasing you up. That's where the Lord has commanded you. You are the one walking in disobedience. For as long as the prodigal son had money, he thought he had favor. He did not realize that he was the one spending money on himself and spending the money on his crew and his boys that were hanging out with him when he went to a far country. The favor of the Lord did not follow him to the far country. He was the one that decided to carry his goods, carry his inheritance, carry all that he owned, and traveled to a far country and wasted his resources there. For you to know that the favor of God did not follow him there, the Bible says he began to be in want. Luke chapter 15. He began to be in want. And he would have filled his stomach with a horse given to the swine. And the Bible says, and I want you to read this specifically so that you will know that favor didn't follow him when he left the will of God. Favor didn't go with him when he abandoned the presence of God. Verse 14, Luke 15, 14. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine, and he would have filled his belly with the horse that the swine did eat. And no man 
gave unto him. Now, how bad can things get? How bad can things get when you are out of God's favor? He said, no man. No man gave unto him. Whether he went to the middle of the center of the market to say, please just give me one up. Well, go get, get away from this place. Or he went to the side of the road as a beggar and was this around to the Lord. Nobody gave unto him. Or he went, wherever he went, he says, no man, not one person gave unto him. How did the situation turn around? He said to himself, I will arise. I will return. Where I lost out in favor before God, that's the place where the Lord has commanded my favor. And the moment he showed up on the horizon, going back to his father's house, favor started accruing to him. Instantly, as he showed up there, what he did not enjoy for all the period he was in the far country, they all started chasing him there. The father ran to him, hugged him, asked the servant to bring and clean him up, bring him, wrap him in a royal robe, bring out the fatted calf, throw a party. Everything just happened in one day. The same person that no man gave unto when he was in the far country. What changed? Obedience. That's all that changed. He left the place of disobedience and came back to the place of obedience. In Genesis 26, there was famine in the land of Gera. Isaac wanted to relocate to Egypt. And he had already probably packed his bags and God appeared to him and said, do not go to Egypt. Stay in this land. And I will fulfill my commandment and my covenant with your father Abraham. And I will bless you and increase you. And the Bible says, and Isaac obeyed. Now don't forget, the place where he stayed, the Bible says there was famine in the land. So it's not as if it was ordinarily an environment that would have thrived for everybody. But there was a peculiarity that God was about to introduce into the life of Isaac, but he demanded him staying in that land. If he had gone to Egypt, he would not have got it. If he had gone to elsewhere, he would not have got it. But only if he stayed in that land, even though the land was not yielding for everybody else, God said, this year, this land, you will reap a hundredfold. And Isaac sowed in that land, and in that same year, he reaped a hundredfold. And the Philistines envied him because they were not enjoying what he was enjoying. Yet they were in the same land. Yet they were in the same land. Don't think because things are difficult in any land, that means that everybody else will suffer what others are suffering. All you need to ask of God is the favor of the Lord. When you are favored of the Lord and you are in the place of obedience with God, it does not matter what other people are suffering. It does not matter what everybody is going through. When the favor of the Lord rests upon you, it will command a blessing that you yourself cannot imagine is a blessing you can, you can hold on to. It's just too much. That's how God's favor works. And so if a man will desire to enjoy the favor of the Lord, leave the place of struggle. The place of disobedience is always a place of struggle. The prodigal son was struggling, laboring, day and day and night because he was out of sync. It is vain for a man to get up early and to sit up late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow for he giveth his beloved sleep it is only when you are in the place of disobedience that that begins to happen. Ordinarily, he giveth his beloved sleep. The place of obedience is important if you and I will command the favor of God over our lives this year. Are you willing to obey God's instructions this year? Are you willing to serve God faithfully? Are you willing to do that which will please God? Are you willing to walk in his ways? If you go back to our text in book of Proverbs chapter 3. It makes some profound statements 
that I want us to take note of. Proverbs chapter 3, these were direct instructions from God to you and I. My son, forget not my law. Let thy heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Specific instructions that God is giving us. Bind the mercy and truth are about thy neck. Write them upon the tables of thy heart. Let it be your guiding light. Let it be your instructing walk. Let it be the last thing you see at night. The first thing you see in the morning. Let it govern your life. Why? For so shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Only when these are fulfilled, he said, then you will find good understanding and favor, both in the sight of God and in the sight of man. But if you do not follow after this, will such a person find favor in the sight of God, talk less of man? Don't equate favor with man with favor with God. Sometimes we have enjoyed favor with some men. But after a while, we stopped enjoying favor with the same men. And you are wondering why. How many of you have experienced that before? Some men, they show you favor. After a while, you show up there, they chase you away. In some cases, you enjoy favor before some men, but then they change guards. Another man comes to the seat, and it is disfavor. That tells you that you cannot cut the favor of man. What you should cut is the favor of God. When you find favor before God, you will find favor before men. That's the fourth thing you need to note. When you find favor before God, you will find favor before men. Now, the men you will find favor before may not be the men you are focusing on. Because sometimes you think that it is the man that you think that will do it, that will do it. But that's not the man that God will use to do it. There are many benefits I've enjoyed in my life. And the ways they came did not come from the sources I expected they would come from. It came from least expected sources. It came from sources that nobody expected would be the place. The favor of God assures us of the favor of man. When the church in Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 found favor before God, they commanded favor before men. When the apostles walked in ways pleasing God, they found favor before God and they found favor before men. When Joseph's ways pleased God, he found favor before God and found favor before men. It was never in the reverse. So if you and I will walk in the divine favor of God this year, don't put your own in the reverse. Don't seek favor of man before favor of God. Rather seek the favor of God and then you'll find favor before men. Rather seek favor before God and then you'll find favor before men. And even if you find men that constitute themselves into obstacles that choose not to favor you, there's nothing to worry about. A man considered an obstacle to the graduation of my wife in South Africa for her PhD. He made himself a, a, a blockade. He withstood her to the end. But she found favor before his boss. Now, here you are, seemingly thinking all power belongs to me. But there was somebody above that you thought I too will not have access to. 
But when the Holy Spirit ministered that, send the mail to this person and send the mail to those people. They started communicating directly with the student. They bypassed, they bypassed the seeming powerful man. Till they finished, till her name entered graduation list, he didn't know. On the day of graduation, this one I saw it with my own koro koro eyes. On the day of graduation, they were having small mini cocktail before the main event. So we're both there with other graduates, people. And then the man walked in. I was seeing him for the first time. White guy. And she introduced me. This is my husband. Ah, how are you doing? Very nice. And then he said, please, let, let's take photographs. So we went outside where they had the red carpet. We took photographs. And then I strolled away so that students can talk to lecturer. Immediately I strolled away. Every niceness about the face changed. And he, he was wearing a cruel looking face and started harassing her. Why did you tell me that you are going to graduate? Why are you not supposed to do it? Why are you not supposed to do it? And started a raking and raking and raking. Because he suddenly realized that they had bypassed him. But he couldn't go and complain to his boss that you bypassed me. So he's the only one you cover it, but by then it was too late. Hallelujah. But when the Lord has favored you, the only thing she was saying is, Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know you were not informed. I sent it. Oh, I'm so sorry. Mm, I'm so sorry. Mm, I'm so <laughs> There's nothing else to say. After I'm not a member of your staff, if they didn't inform you, not my fault. There's no need, no argument. The Lord has favored you. Just be raking and, and sulking in, in the corner there. So recognize that when you find favor before God, you will find favor before men. No matter who the man is. No matter how high the man is. No matter how wicked the man is. No matter how tough the man is. If you command the favor of God, you will humble such men before you. How many of you desire to enjoy the Lord's favor this year? Shall we rise? Enjoying the favor of the Lord. We will continue next week and we're going to be looking at another angle because this year must not pass you by without you walking in the favor of God. There are many areas of our lives that the Lord wants to favor us. Do you know that some people will be dethroned because God wants to favor you. Just like Vashti was dethroned because Anesta was about to happen on the scene. And for as long as Vashti was on the throne, Esther's appearance will not happen. Lift your hands and just begin to bless the Lord. Just thank him. Just give him thanks. Just give him thanks. Just give him praise. Just thank him for his good word unto you this year. Just thank him because of that which he has professed that he will do. Begin to pray that all the days of this year, let my life be pleasing to God. Let my ways be pleasing to God. Let my thoughts be pleasing to God. I want you to lay your hearts bare before God this morning. And if there be anything that you feel will hinder your life pleasing God, cast them at his feet and ask for his mercy. Ask for a purging by his spirit that my life will please God throughout the days of this year. That my life will please God throughout the months of this year. That my life will please you wherever I go. That my life will please you before whomsoever I stand. That my life will please you in whatever place I am. In the name of Jesus, ask that the favor of the Lord will rest upon you. The favor of the Lord will rest upon you. The favor of the Lord will rest upon the work of your hands. The favor of the Lord will rest upon that enterprise. 
The favor of the Lord will rest upon you as a staff in that place. The favor of the Lord will rest upon every work that you do. Your work will be endeared by the mercy and the favor of God. Men will give up and give in and re-listen to you simply because you command the favor of God. Wisdom will speak for you. Favor will attend unto all your efforts in the name of Jesus. In your studies, in your academics, the Lord will favor you. You may have applications in the midst of many, the Lord will favor you. You may have desires in the midst of many other contenders, the Lord will single you out for his favor. In the name of Jesus, pray for yourself. That every day of this year, let favor attend unto me. Every day of this year, Lord, let the Lord's favor envelop me. With favor, he will encompass me as of a shield. With favor, he will encompass me as of a shield. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands and bless the Lord. Just give him thanks. Just give him praise. Father, we bless you forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Shall we bow our heads?